Here at the uh, Amsterdam Court Hotel in Midtown Manhattan with Jason Gallagher, lead singer, songwriter, and spiritual center of the band Leroy Justice. Uh, Jason, it's great to have you here today. Thanks for having me, man. Throw any TVs out the window last night? Oh, no, they usually uh, bolt them down when they see us coming. But you try? Uh, yeah, we always give it a shot. You guys played a killer set last night uh, at Brooklyn Bowl opening for North Mississippi All-Stars. You totally destroyed. It was a really awesome show. How's it feel the next morning? Uh, it's a lot quieter right now. Uh, you know, the buzz is kind of still there, but it's, you know, we had a great night. It was, it was a fun show. You guys really brought it. It was sold out. That, that house was packed. Uh, what was the total count? Oh, I don't know. Like, uh, Brooklyn Bowl is probably six, seven hundred, something like that. And your following here in New York, um, is that about the average uh, number of folks that tend to come out for you? Uh, I think as of late, we've been getting better crowds. We've been uh, kind of doing a little better, having bigger shows. And, you know, uh, all thanks to the fans and everyone telling everybody about us. You know, Where are you guys from originally? Uh, I'm from Pennsylvania originally. Uh, a couple of guys are. And uh, then we kind of scatter around Indiana and New Jersey. And you're based here in New York? Yeah, we all kind of met in New York, uh, so th that's where we're based. Yeah, do people often presume that you're from down below the Mason-Dixon line? Uh, we get that a lot. I guess it's, uh, you know, I think when we started, we were a little more, had a little more southern sound, and the name kind of uh, calls on the, the, the southern kind of vibe. So uh, we get mistaken for that a lot, but, you know, we are Yankees playing. Where did the name Leroy Justice come from? Uh, the name Leroy Justice came from, uh, our friend has a, his father, his name is actually Leroy Justice. Uh, and we, when we were naming the band, we had a bunch of names that we liked, but that kind of took over and we decided to borrow his name. Any royalties issues uh, with that? No. Uh, he always said, uh, he always joked, uh, when you guys get famous, I'm going to sue y'all for a million dollars. Mm -hmm. But never have. Now you definitely have some, some Southern rock credibility. It's the first thing I noticed uh, when I saw you guys for the first time. Uh, how would you describe your music, or how would other people describe it as well? I think that's the first thing that comes out. It's like roots rock, but uh, we're really, you know, kind of expanding into different areas of rock now, and it, we kind of let it go where it, it takes us. And uh, if, if it's one thing, it's, it's passionate, kind of sweaty, loud, fun rock and roll. Uh, especially at the shows, you know. Uh, but we also have songs, you know. We have it's not just sprawling big rock tunes, you know. It's yeah. uh, we have the three and a half minute songs that we love. So yeah. now you're the primary songwriter for the band. Do you usually write songs in like seclusion and then bring them to the band for further arrangement, or do you guys put them together at the same time? Uh, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll write songs, uh, you know, verse, chorus, and then kind of bring them to the band and we form them into songs. But uh, it also goes the other way. Sometimes I'll write with the drummer and it's all music based and kind of go from there. It happens different ways, whatever. Do you primarily write on guitar? I do, yeah. I'm a guitar player, so uh, I could dabble in other instruments, but that's my, that's the one that kind of comes easiest. And are you self-taught or have you had lessons uh, growing up? No, I'm self-taught. Uh, I, I kind of, I think I've, you know, maybe had, uh, sh you know, you sit down with a couple people who know how to play guitar and you learn a couple things here and there, but never any. So where do you guys land when you come off the road off, off of your tours? Uh, we're really lucky. We have this uh, kind of hometown spot in Pennsylvania, this uh, old bakery that my buddy owns, and he kind of uh, lets us in there for very, very nominal fees. Uh, and it's uh, kind of in his backyard, but it's this huge open warehouse space that is just, it's got the best vibe. It's got a huge old steel oven in it. And uh, we set up in there, we record in there, we rehearse in there, and uh, there's lots of room for us, and it's, it's, it's a nice home. And it's nice to be home. You know? And you never go hungry, I imagine. Uh, the bakery is non-functional, but uh, we do know, uh, we never go hungry because my mom uh, always brings food by us. So you got mom in the kitchen. Yeah, it's nice. Now, now thematically, uh, within your songwriting, are there subjects that you've noticed you focus on or come back to from time to time? Oh, I mean, I think uh, we all write about girls a lot. Anybody who writes songs ends up writing about girls a lot. Uh, but our songs also have a lot of energy and, and thematically kind of call for things that are, are, are important to us and we're passionate about, too. So it, I think it kind of 
bleeds into, you know, anything from politics to family things to, you know, anything that means a lot to us. Well, you pour yourself into your performances. I noticed that uh, on the occasions I've seen you. I mean, you are, you are in the zone. Um, but there's also some very strong sentiments that uh, I've noticed that you're, you're evoking, particularly in your song Domino. What's that song about and what are some lines from it? I think it's we all fall like a domino uh, through no fault of our own. It, it kind of came out of the climate that brought, you know, Barack Obama into office. That that time, that economy, that you know, our country around that time. And it, it, you know, I think my songs are end up being about one thing to start, but then kind of end up being about a couple different things. And it's about everyone in the country. Uh, in the situation they were in, like, and it was about the splitting of the highs and lows, the, the, you know, the no, the absence of middle class. And, but you know, I hate telling everyone what the songs are about sometimes. But you know how it is. So. Leave it up to them. Now, now sonically, how did the songs kind of like evolve and grow over the course of time with performances and touring and playing with other uh, musicians as well? We have a strong connection, I think where we can kind of play, play off each other and listen to each other and, and know where we're going without talking about it. And I think anybody playing this kind of music has that sensibility and, and, and knows how to form songs like that. So that it's really informed what we do live. It's, we try to bring that into live shows as much as possible where we can have these moments of, you know, absence of structure and, and kind of find our way and, and I think it really creates an, like a, an intense emotional kind of situation. I think what Leroy Justice does really well is tread that line between kind of structured songs and, and jam band. Like, I can feel like you guys have these jam band tendencies, but you don't take it too far. That you actually have songs with hooks and verses and, and, and structure. Uh, it's funny. I, I think it's we all have a, a similar sense of humor and, and, and personality. It, it's, it's really... Uh, you know, you, you hang out with other bands or you hang out with other people and they're sometimes they're standoffish or, you know, uh, in their own heads. And we're kind of all personable kind of guys and willing to kind of talk to anyone and have a good time. And so I, I think that really translates in the music. You're definitely real. What, what's your opinion of like this kind of um, attitude that is somewhat prevalent in the industry about, you know, the way bands act or the way they think they have to act? Uh, and portray themselves uh, in in the media and to their fans. Oh, I don't know. I mean, I I guess everyone's different, and that maybe that works for certain people and their kind of music and what they're doing, and that's their thing. But I think in our kind of our world, like our genre of music, it's uh, I found that it, it's a really warm place and really friendly place, and and everyone gets along pretty well, and it's not uh, there's. A lot of absence of attitude and, and that helps I think with the music with you know people sitting in like last night we had some people sit in with us and you could do that and it's there's no egos and it's it's just a good time and who joined you on stage last night uh, last night we had uh, Luther Dickinson from North Mississippi all-stars and uh, uh, sister Sparrow and one of her dirty birds uh, Jackson uh, so yeah, it was like a it was a party up there. It was lots of people on stage. And you guys are pretty good friends with North Mississippi All Stars. You've been on uh, tours with them, or you played other shows with them? Uh, they've uh, yeah, Cody, uh, their drummer, sat in with us before. We've we've known them for a while. We we just did a little run with them uh, that ended last night. So let's talk about influences uh, for a minute. Uh, how'd you get your start in songwriting? Uh, I would probably go back to. You know, my parents were in a, an acoustic trio when I was growing up, and you know, they would rehearse in the kitchen. I'd be up in my bedroom, ears covered. I kind of hated all that kind of music back then, but uh, you know, Neil Young, Crosby, Stills, Nash, uh, you know, that whole genre. And now it's some of my favorite stuff. So I think that really influenced me. I could definitely hear some Neil in uh, in your songs and, and with Leroy Justice. Uh, um, what are some other artists that are uh, influences on you? Any, I think any rock and roll from the 70s, uh, that, that was a great era for me. You know, that, that I kind of, you know, I'm one of those people that feel like they needed to be alive in the 70s and, and I, should be, I should be there. Uh, Stones, Zeppelin, Dylan, all that, of course, the roots of all that. But I, I also, I'm a big bluegrass fan too, so 
you know, I, I, all that Bill Monroe stuff, you know, that high lonesome sound. Is there anybody you'd give up your uh, New York City taxi to on a, on a rainy night? Oh, uh, that's a diamond in the rough, the taxi on a rainy night in New York. It's, it's I don't think, you know, nobody. Nobody. I, I, I've, I've fought for taxis before. I've, I'm the guy that uh, when somebody takes it down the street, I'm yelling at them. And, uh, and, you know, usually the people I'm with are restraining me. Well, I'm actually working on a book myself called A, a Thousand Imaginary Conversations with Bono. <laughs> are there any artists that uh, maybe you've imagined yourself getting some FaceTime with that you'd love to uh, just bend their ear? Uh, I think I've had, you know, since I was younger, uh, imaginary conversations with Eric Clapton. Uh, he's he's been like my uh, my my guru. He's been my my Elvis in the bathroom, uh, if, you know, uh, true romance style. Uh, so that's 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 been my my one idol. I think I've I've always wanted to meet and hang out with. Well, maybe you'll get the chance soon enough. Now, you, you strike me as such a, a low-key dude, but I also have this creeping suspicion that when you're with the rest of the guys in the band that things aren't as, as low-key. Uh, am I on to something with that? Oh, no, no. We're all good good boys, you know. We don't, we don't do anything. What's this story I hear about uh, your show in, uh, what was it, St. Joe, Tennessee? Oh, the St. Joe, Tennessee show. Yeah, sure. Uh, that's, that's, I think that's a go-to story that we tell because it's... Uh, it is uh, one of our favorite nights, I think, in our lives. Well, enlighten our, our fine audience with uh, some of the high points of that particular uh, event. Okay, so uh, a couple years ago, tour, St. Joe, Tennessee. It's right on the border of Alabama. That'll give you a little clue where we're going. Uh, we show up, we're playing with this band, Hillbilly Deluxe, which to this day... Got, That's ironic. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> or not, you know, uh, maybe very literal uh, description greatest group of guys like loved our music were so psyched to have us like rolled out the red carpet the uh redneck red carpet <laughs> the redneck red carpet i guess sure uh you know and everything from chicken drop bingo which if you don't know what that is uh, you can google it. i've been around yeah uh to a uh, wet t-shirt contest they let us judge to you know sitting in with them for Freebird, like it was just you know it, and the whole night ended with the uh, obligatory uh, guy in overalls with white hair and a mason jar of a clear liquid that we were all drinking. You know, it was uh, right down to the last detail. It was pretty epic. So you're partying in the parking lot with Uncle Jesse from the Dukes. It was pretty much Uncle Jesse, yeah. It was, it was pretty great. So um, where do you see your music taking you? Where do you want Leroy Justice to, uh, to arrive in, in the coming years? Uh, you know, we want to... We want to uh, play a lot, you know. We want to play to everyone that we haven't played to, like in the west part of the country. I think we haven't really been out west late, uh, yet, and we're, we're starting to expand more. We want to go overseas, but you know, we want to uh, we, we want to battle. We want to fight for our our place in, in that in that world, you know, in our in our world of music. I want we want to play, you know to lots of people I think what do you what do you want people to know what do you want fans to know about Leroy Justice like your your reason for being I mean why do you do what you do well we uh, we, we we don't know anything else you know I think it, it won't die this this thing that we've started it, it's you know it's something that won't die for us it's it's something that we love to do and it's fun and it's we're trying to make it into like our, our, you know, our livings, and we're trying to make good livings out of it. But we also know that we can't stop it. So it's like this, you know, catch twenty-two, I guess. Uh, but it's a, uh, you know, we we won't die. It's we're, we're not going to stop. I get that feeling. Absolutely, wish you the best of luck. Thanks. It's been a pleasure having you. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me.